welcome back to Spakovo. It's episode four with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only quarter to five. We're off the back of the previous episode. There's a couple of things I need to do before I skip ahead till tomorrow. I have got, as you've already seen, uh, 5,022 litres of barley off of our field just here. We've got a little bit of wheat off of a previous contract, which I dumped on the floor in here. We are in need of a silo. Um, so I have found some component parts to make a silo, which is going to be awesome. I'm also going to put in a little workshop um, little workshop station, I think probably just here, to do some work. We're going to get um, a front loader attacher for our Mercedes. And I've been reliably informed by my, my machinery um, consultant, Stuart, has suggested uh, a particular one that will work. I've also taken on a triticale harvesting contract, but as we know, we've got rain coming. It's going to be here about five o'clock, so that I hope will carry over till tomorrow. It might carry over till tomorrow, potentially. We ended up with four straw bales off of this field, which I've got to collect. Another reason why I'm going to get a, a front loader. I was just going to buy, you can get a three point link mounted um, bale spike, and I thought, you know what, I could just get one of those and we'll just get them off the field bring them over and stack them with the other bales we've got but um, to be fair front load will come in handy we'll get a bucket as well um, so what I'll do first let's go to yeah let's go through here so it's going to be a 35,000 litre silo um, I have got permission from the neighbours next door we're going to be using part of their building in here for storage because we've got a cow barn here we could set up a silo at the other farm, but in all honesty, I'd rather have it here for the time being. Make stuff a little bit easier. And then we'll put our um, little workshop just in there. So, bear with me a moment. And there we have it. So, 35,000 litre silo. Putting in, taking out. We are plumbed into next door. Worked really well. And then we've got ourselves a little workshop bench. I normally use the toolbox mod, and I've used that a lot. So, again, I was, I was thinking, you know what, let's try something different. Something I haven't used before different silos that kind of stuff and what I need to do now is move that out of the way can I get past it with this that's the question otherwise I'll go all the way around I should be able to get past I'd rather get a different sort of plow maybe a subsoiler type thing again that'd be small I've got small equipment but I think I'd rather that and then what I'll do is um move that out of the way when we get our front loader we'll get a bucket and we'll pick up that wheat and then what we'll do tomorrow I think we're going to no, do, do that we'll do that tomorrow I think we're going to um, look at getting something for producing seed great things come from the planting of a small seed Sometimes a seed of doubt, sometimes a seed of growth. But we're going to go for growth, I hope, I'm hoping for this time. Uh, so, next then, oh, actually, what we can do, let's put our barley in. We're going to do a kind of mix, I think, of... Um, Equipment and land, hopefully. Like I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep picking up contracts because that's what you do. So it's not a massive silo. It was only ten grand. So to be fair, we should be golden. And I'm assuming, actually, I never thought to check. I'm assuming as silos go, it'll be a thirty-five thousand liter total capacity. So I should be able to put multiple crops in there. Uh, next up then, let's put the trailer, actually you know what, I'll put the trailer here for the time being. Probably close that cow barn up till we get some cows. And then we'll uh, go to the store and I'll sort out a front loader. You haven't got to worry about that too much for the time being. And we'll see what harvest, or I say harvest, what contracts we get available tomorrow. Fertile, did I say? I'll probably put it up at the start, didn't I? Fertilising contract got done fairly quickly actually, it was a 42 metre spreader. So we just bought um, a farm supply pack fertiliser bag, box, bag. So we should be able to customise with uh, subframe additional lights, attacher type. 
Oh, front loader attacher, yes. Stall, there we go, that's what we need. It's the stall pickup we're going to be using. How much is that? 1,500. Customised, thank you very much. While I've been doing all this, word has reached me. It's not looking good for the Ford, unfortunately, that went in for a bit of work. Um, it's a bit more extensive. And potentially we could have this longer term than we thought. I'm also considering if we're going to have this longer term than we thought, about maybe even um, suggesting we just swap. If, if they are happy to take that on and want it, I don't know if it's worth more to them than this is, I don't know, but... Maybe just swap tractors. Might not be a bad idea. Anyway, I'm off to store. Front loader. I'll get um, a barrel spike. I need to move those. Um... Actually, you know what I might do? I'm going to get a bucket because I need a bucket. Um, I might get one of those rear mounted barrel spikes. That way I can do both. I can bring both over at the same time. I've only got three, four barrels to move and I haven't got to move them far. And I haven't got to load them onto a trailer. So to be fair, I can probably get away with that. Whoa. Do you realize there's a nice bit of movement on the front of this? Oh, while I'm doing this, channel memberships are live, people. If you're following this, if you're following my channel, if you've uh, been a long-time supporter, fan, whatever it might be, um, and you want to help support the channel further, especially with dwindling, um, dwindling ad revenues on YouTube and that kind of stuff, to keep the channel going, to keep it alive, um, it would help massively if you would consider it. There's only one tier. One tier on my channel memberships. When I stream, we've got um, additional uh, emojis. We've got some badges for how long you can work your way up through the rankings. We have also got uh, there's a 10% discount. Oh, again, 10% discount on all merchandise, and there will also be a monthly. I don't know, chat session, I guess, on Discord. I'll jump in on the Discord. Anyone who's a channel member. Uh, we'll go on and you can ask me questions, we can chat, hang out, whatever you want to do. Um, all for 4 99 The cost of a, you know, I suppose a large coffee at any of the, any of the coffee retailers, plenty are available, and that's a month. For a month's worth of content, all the mod reviews, map tours, dad jokes, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> if that's what you like, if you like the dad jokes and things. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to consider it, it's available. Anyway. Now this should, because it's stall and it's long enough, should attach on. Gives us plenty of reach on there. I probably could have got away with the 30, but actually to be fair, this sticks out far enough that it's away from the um, three-point link as well. So that'll work very nicely. I'll go and pick that wheat up and we'll get that moved so we can find ourselves a bale spike. Well, that's, uh, that is actually... Whoa, look at that. I'm going to need a weight on the back, aren't I? I mean, we are leaning forward on the hill, but that's a lot of weight over the front already without anything else being on there. That didn't dawn on me. Okay, well... I'm trying to think when this happened before. Oh, here we go. Now the rain's starting. See you later on.
it's a new day. The rain has stopped and I'm doing something different. I haven't finished off the triticale harvest yet. And I've also decided I didn't take the straw off that previous harvest. I'm taking some of the straw from the triticale harvest. I'm going to do it. A lot of people commented, like I said, people would be divided. And a lot of people said, you know what, just do it. If you're going to take straw, take the straw. It doesn't matter. Real farmers do it, take it. So that's what I'm doing. Like it, loathe it, however you feel about it. That's what I'm doing. But we're doing a parsnip harvest. And I'm using the devolf. I've never used it. I'm a devolf virgin. I've never used one before. So why not? First try, we'll give it a go. It's actually working pretty well. I'm sure when that first came out, it wouldn't operate properly. There was a problem. I'm assuming it's had plenty of updates since then. This is the sell point here in this root crop storage barn. If the price goes up, I've got something wrong. It shouldn't do. So what we're going to do now is see... Um... <laughs> it's going to be like it always is. Any root crops. You come to deliver them and you put it in and it'll be a tiny fraction, a tiny percentage of the overall contract. And that's when you realise you've bitten off more than you can chew. As I always do. Um, the trick hole harvest, I'll be bouncing between the two, but I'll, I'll show this. Yeah, 4% for one tray load. Ooh, dear. Okay, well, you know. If you have passed it left over, great. This paid out quite well. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll show you later on. Um, and I'll show you some more of doing the parsnip harvest. I'm just trying to find myself, um, get myself a channel that I can run um, to the side of without driving over the crops. It's very difficult when you first start off, unless you're right on the edge of the crop. But then when you turn around, unless you go from one side of the field to the other, at some point you're going to end up driving on the crop. So I'm trying to do it so I'm avoiding that, if it makes sense. I'm also going to put in a little hayloft. The mods I'm using are in the description, it's a Hellraiser one, I think it is. 5,000 to buy, I'm going to put that in, so when I get some of the straw swath off of the triticale field, um, rather than bale it, I'm going to put it into a, a little, it's kind of an open-sided shed storage thing? Yes, along those lines. Anyway, that's the first bit done, <laughs> 8%. Ah <sighs> oh dear, just another 9, 10 loads like that, no problem at all. Well... I'll see in a bit. We'll have a look at the harvester and stuff, and then uh, I need to, like I say, I'm going to bounce between the two and try and get some of the triticale done too. And uh, just trying to build up my money so I can do all the bits I need to do, and we'll move forward. I want to get, uh, at the end of the episode, I want to get some kind of seed producing piece of equipment, whether it's, uh, I don't want to get the seed treatment auger, I use that a lot, I think. So, as I said, I'm kind of bouncing between. <laughs> so, here's one of my loads of straw. Um, I did lease the um, that forage pickup header unit. It was three thousand, I think it was, to lease. So I've done that. What I'm going to do is show you the uh, little. The, you can get a hayloft and you can get a straw one. I've got the straw one because I've got hay bales, and if I do the baling contracts, um, we can bale. I'm wondering on twenty-five actually, but that'll become a thing. Whether you can get contracts for doing straw baling, that'd be quite cool, I reckon. Because we get this, the hay baling ones on grass fields and stuff like that. It would be cool to have a contract that, you know, when you have the AI fields, that as you go through, they will be harvested. If it's a wheat, barley field like that, I reckon it should be harvested and leave the straw swath behind. So then you've got the option of, a, you might have a contract where you get to bale a previously harvested field. I think that'd be quite cool. Anyway, the other thing I was going to show you as well was my... Um, front loader that I bought didn't work it, I think I should have got the smaller one the 30 not the 60 but that being said anyway um, I bought a bale spike as well it was um, it was just too long so I took it back and then it suddenly dawned on me when I took it back to return it I already had a front loader attachment a Howell one at the other farm so um, I went over there to get that and it connected no problem and it's shorter and smaller and it worked so I know this is the Stoll attacher um, but it connected onto the Hauer one no problem so I kind of just left it as that so say why is that not coming up there we go so this will just gradually fill up in there and I can get access it whenever I want so it's just a yeah I think it was five grand and like I said there's, there's a hay one as well I think it might hold 100,000 litres or something like that. So I'll stick it out on the ground we own behind the farm. Why not? We've got our other bales here as well. I mean, I probably should build a shelter 
for those really they shouldn't be out in the rain you know you know how it works why did I, where did I leave my other where did I leave the front loader I definitely detached it but I can't remember where I left it oh in there there we go I don't want to keep doing that I've got lights in here I suddenly thought that I was doing some editing we've got lights there we go well, sort of yeah we had that already and it connects up fine and runs no problem so i did buy a back weight as well just to give myself a bit of balance when i'm doing stuff that does give us now the capacity and ability to do a whole load of stuff without necessarily needing to get a skids because my default is always get a skids to loader get a telehandler we will do it at some point we'll work up to that that's kind of the plan but for the time being there you go turn that off those four up there i can use those for bedding or atomics ration and stuff like that i'm going to need to get a Probably a trailed one, I guess. I could get a fixed in place, maybe total mix ration thing. Yeah, regardless. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the triticale. If we have any triticale left over, I think I might just sell it all. Because um, I'm pretty sure none of the productions or buildings or any of the things that allow you to make seed, potentially the AGI auger will, but I say I've used that so many times. And I know I'm going to also say this now. I'm sure people will message me with 101 suggestions of different productions, different methods, different ways of doing whatever it is I'm going to do. And I may bounce my way through various different ones. I might start off with a small one, I might work my way out. I don't want to jump straight to a final one that does everything, because again, it's that thing of there's no kind of build up. It's just, yeah, okay, it does everything. Well done. Um, because there are a few. There's a couple of production buildings where you can produce all the things you need, Biomatana and people like that. I'm going to start off with a seed production, and I think the first one we're going to get only does wheat and barley. And then I'll, you know, because it's not expensive either, I think it's five grand as well for that. So I'm just picking off a few things here and there. And as we start to earn more money, we build up our equipment, possibly get more land, whatever it is we end up doing. We'll go from there. So I, I will see you again. I, I'm going to bounce between, but I'm going to head over and I will see you at the, um, the parsnip harvesting in a moment. Mind the deer. Oh, this map is gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. So I've done what I usually do, <laughs> and I've um, taken on the harvest, say next field over, is it 48 and 49? We're doing parsnip at the moment, we're going to do red beet as well. Oh, is that this one? Oh, okay. Utilising the same, yeah, utilising the same gear. Um, yeah, so what I've been trying to do here, because you have to run alongside it, as you do with most harvesters, um, starting on the edge of the field was a tricky one because you were right on the edge of another field anyway so the first strip was and unfortunately you had to drive on the crop like there was, wasn't really a way i could do it it's a lot of weeds as well so you're going to lose a little bit anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to jump in it does mean we're going to be using local workers as well which we're going to have to do 
So anyway, this is going to work. Now, I've got to remember. Oh, I'm going to get near, um, Have I got my cruise control right? Well, cruise controls on four. Start that up. Edge forward. That's interesting because that seems to be sitting higher than it was before. I don't know why. Right, let's edge up the cruise control to five. It takes me a little bit too fast. Knock it back to four. And there we go. So what we can do, like I say, it, now we've got this gap in the middle, is we can now, when we get to the end of the, the road, doing the ends is going to be the hardest bit because the only downside, and we've said this right from the outset, is this harvester does know its own bunk. So it doesn't store anything. It just takes it straight through, processes, comes out the other side and goes in trailer. So doing headlands is really difficult. So what we'll do is the harvester will go from this side, we get to the end of the field, it will go this side, so as it comes down the field that way, it will be in this middle trench. So it will mean the gap will be getting wider and wider each time. But it's the only way, real way of doing it without... I say without driving on the crop each time you know if, if people don't mind doing that that's absolutely fine i suppose if you had narrows on stuff but even with the trailers you wouldn't be able to so it's a tricky one and you'll see when we get to the end how do you yeah how do you do those headlands realistically um i guess we could hire a worker at an angle it's, it's a tricky one with this harvester i love the way these operate I, I haven't used this one at all, like I say, since it all came out. I didn't use the trail ones either. Or either. Didn't use them either. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll leave that there. Jump in this one. And the problem is, you've got a... Let's, let's say it's, um, it's a weird one. I guess what you have to do is, if you're going to do this, you've got to move the trailers to be alongside it. Yeah, it's a really weird... If I bring those along to maybe here... Hmm. That's got a lot further forward. Actually, it takes a little while before you get, I say, full. Maybe we could, I guess, yeah. If I just pull that, but then we're, we're on a bit now without where it hasn't been harvested. Hmm. So I'm going to have to drive on the crop. I didn't really want to. If I bring it right forward to there. Anyway, yeah. Like, the trials and tribulations. And get to there. And get it to come back before that all goes to there. There we go. Yeah, so I guess we can to a degree. Right, I'm going to spend a bit of time doing that, I guess. Um, and this is just going to take a while. Of course it is. I mean, look at the size of the field. What I need to do is angle to cut. So I wonder how, how good the angle of said dangle is. If we can get to the edge of the field that side, that angle there, will it match up with the angles the harvesters will operate at? I guess that's a tricky one, isn't it? I can't wait for 25 because all the fields are mapped, all the fields will have the GPS in place. So hiring workers, it will do all of that for you. You won't have to worry, it won't matter what the angles are, it will have calculated and worked them out. So it will do all your headlands, no matter what the angles are. No more of that nonsense will exist. I say nonsense, you know what I mean. Know what I mean? Yeah, right, okay. I need to get this end sorted out. I'm going to need to do the other end as well. Um, if I manage to sort out, like a, I love the way that all adjusts. Look at that shifting as you go. It's brilliant. Such a cool bit of kit. Let's move this out of the way. Now I can get this off the field here without being on the crop, which is not good. This is going to take a while. <laughs> but I'm going to still have to... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, regardless, I'm going to have to drive in the crop, whatever I do here. 
Why do they? Well, I suppose the real life version doesn't. But how do you do these? I suppose because technically it doesn't matter if you drive on the top because it's a root crop. The crop is under the ground. All we're driving on is the shrub bit on top, the bit that aids photosynthesis, the bit that takes in the sunlight that take, you know that helps them grow. At this point, the crop is underground. If you drive across those, it doesn't actually matter, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Let's nod along and just pretend that everything's okay. I'm going to run down this strip now, I think. And bear in mind, this is now uh, since Premium Expansion came out, so... Nearly a year old and I haven't used it. <laughs> That's good. And then we've got all the new stuff coming with spinach and oh, it's going to be all the new Oxbow stuff. I think it's no surprise or secret anymore that green bean and peas are going to be part of it. So our new crop types are going to be rice, long grain rice, spinach, peas and green beans. And I'm pretty sure that um, Kermit said it brings the crop types to 25. I'm sure it was 25. 25 crops. Wow. Didn't like that. Did not like that at all. Right, let's see if I can get a, an edge. And get back to the trailer before it all runs through. Well, what we'll do now, get back in line there. Let's get the trailer right over, come on. There we go. Cruise control on. Another long strip down. So I'll see in a little while. I'm going to say a little while. Um, yeah. Don't know how long. Can I adjust that? Um, I don't know if I can adjust up and down. It's, it's very close to the trailer. I'd rather it was a bit higher in all honesty. Nice.
It's 12.06, some time has passed and I have a problem. It's a good problem to have, I'm not going to lie. Um, I just took, well, I'm coming back from completing the contract. I have had to put some on the floor because this was full. I unloaded some onto the floor, then refilled it. The field is clear, not the next one, it's the one over. And the harvester is at the top of the next field because we've got a red beet harvester to do over. Was there an easy way of doing what I was doing? No, I just ended up having to drive over the crop. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Root crops, it's all under the ground. So if you're driving over the top stuff, when it's ready to harvest, it's no big deal. It'd be different if you're driving across the crops when they're still growing because you're damaging the plant that requires the growth, you know. So what I'm going to do, I don't have a root crop storage anywhere. I uh, can't really afford, I mean, maybe I could. I don't want to really waste money. I'm going to dump it on the floor. It, it, probably not the best idea. Um see how this pans out see what we'll do if I drive over what I've already dumped there's about 8,000 litres there on the floor if I go there first and we go to that and unload I didn't really want it over spilling but Good, isn't it? A bit. There's a lot. So right into that, which doesn't help. So, what we'll do, if we can get that to turn. Nope, I'm just crunching into things. You know what? The easiest way to do this, let's disconnect that. But this one in first, it's got a little bit in here. I'm assuming we'll have red beet left over as well, which means I'm looking at about 30,000 litres of parsnip. Now, I could have just sold it, and I could still sell it, but we're going to keep hold of it for the time being. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, if I'm going to use it for anything, or whether it will end, just, end up just being something we'll sell. I don't know. I haven't got any plans to do a production that requires it soup or anything like that. I mean, we could potentially do something. I'll do that there. There we go. And this will go up to the other field, but like I said, what I want to do before the end of this episode, because I'm assuming to do the other field, which is a little bit bigger, we're going to be looking at another three, four hours, probably. A bit of battle with some fourteen, and again, I don't mind. Audio book, bit of music. It's all good. I'm listening to a bit of... Um, Warhammer 40k, the Horus Heresy novels at the moment. Which I, I absolutely love them. I, I really, really do. So. I've got a little bit outside. I can always bring over a bucket. last little bit out and I'll put the red beet under there as well yeah we've got a little bit over the sides but it's fine it's under cover pretty much and that's what I wanted I say that's what I wanted I wasn't expecting it I know there'd be some left over it depends with you know what contracts required now had there not been weeds in it it would have been a higher yield as well in which case we probably had a lot more left over so what I'm going to do now Again, I'm going to try at an angle, we'll see how we go. We got the field. We'll turn on the harvester. We're at an angle, I'm not quite sure what angle it's going to end up at. <laughs> and try and do the headlands, and I'll move on to that. But then what I'm going to do, just try this bit out. Like I said, this bit now, red beat, I'm going to do off camera. Um, I can't complete on the contract, because it because I've got this equipment to do both. If I complete the contract I've just done, I'll lose this equipment, and I bought and I didn't borrow any equipment for the other contract, so have to be careful here. And like I say, I'm going to drive over a little bit. I'm not sure quite what angle we're going to be looking at here, but we will try our best. So start that up, hire a worker. Okay, it's gone that angle. Not the end of the world. Oh, hang on! Whoa, 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 whoa! I thought I emptied all that. Brilliant. No. Oh, that's overridden the, what I had in there. 
I was only a little bit, I suppose. <laughs> only a little bit. I think this time, when I did it the first time around, I was kind of getting to grips with the the wolf harvester. Um, I didn't really do the headlands properly, so this time, because that will work at that angle, I'm going to do three or four strips across until I've got this headland done. Because the, the fields are all at a funny angle, they're not, if you look at the crops running straight in that direction, the field runs at that direction, so yeah, it's not the easiest of things. That's what I mean. That's why I can't wait. Looking forward to uh, 25. So what I'll do now, I'll do the send bits, I'll bring the harvester back. What I'm going to do now is head over to the main farm, so the main farm, I mean technically this is the main farm, the other farm, and I'm going to put in, um, I could raise and lower this as well, which made life a little bit easier as well. I'm going to put in um, our, our little seed treatment thing and we'll get some seed underway. And I think that might be where I'll end it, this is what I was aiming to do, I've got the things done I wanted to do, got those bales off the field, got some a silo in, got a little workshop trigger. The angle's not great on this because of the uh, field edge. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, it's not it's not a big fan of that, is it? And at the end of the day, if I decide I'm not going to do a production that requires parsnip or red beet, what I've got left I can just take and sell it. it you know, I'll shovel it all up, put it into a trailer and we'll sell it. I don't mind losing that 700 odd litres because what we got was over and above anyway. And yes, it is using a little bit of our um money because we're hiring a worker which we need to for running this but the contracts pay out well so I don't mind that so much can I probably if I'm quick which I'm not renowned for <laughs> speed is not one of my greatest assets So did not what I'm known for. As a younger man, maybe so. Right, I'll see you in a bit. And like I said, we'll get over and uh, let's get a seed thing in. You can see why people use the Colossus Harvester Pack and stuff like that. <laughs> it does make life a little bit easier. I know this is the real gear, I know this is how it works. Why are you stopping? You did the other strip, no problem at all. And now you've decided, nah, I mean, I'll bother. There we go. What are we doing? No, no, don't turn around. Back at my farm, I'm going through some of the options. These are just various different things that I have accessible. Um, for, for various different things moving further down the line. That one, for example, the homebrew productions. 
water slurry and digestate and we can make fertilizer liquid fertilizer and herbicide from that production which is quite incredible fuel refineries there as well so we can make fuel at some point there's various different feed mixers we've got the digestate fertilizer factory so take digestate make fertilizer we can use that at some point maybe it's quite expensive 110 grand uh, what else have i got installed i've got these ones the 30 master setups the roco master um what else have we got we have got a few of these um so if one of our own productions i used one of these on the um survive to farm series but the edible triggers they're pretty handy actually for doing various different things but and again there are so many different options i haven't got any omitana stuff installed at the moment i've got it installed but not selected um there's the multi-crop there and that will do all of it that can do a whole load of stuff so we can produce seed we can produce manure fertilizer lime the outhouse i'm going to place one of these anyway um straw water and then wood chips so we can do some logging at some point and that will produce slurry manure it was quite slow if i remember correctly when we did one on western wilds i think what i'm going to do we'll probably just put that it's only 500 we'll stick one there and we can use one of those at some point uh we've got that seed production there but that requires herbicide as well which is the same price as i thought we might do pallets at some point as well so if we're going to run a, a production a farm supply company if people need pallets for things we could supply pallets so at some point we could do pallets as well but i'm thinking that one it's quite old it, i think this came out very very early does the wheat and barley that we got we don't need anything else with it 25 grand it's in one end out the other very straightforward and that we can get some seed production underway uh, I've just got to find somewhere we can place this where it's not going to cause an issue. The land's not owned by us there. 25. I'm just want to try and get the price down a little bit if we can. As cheaply as possible. Yeah, we're looking out here. Well, it's not too bad, is it? I don't want to put everything right on top of each other, but it makes sense. So out the back of everything, we can get it all running. Or I suppose I could put it... Can we put it in the yard? I've got enough room. Seems to overlap with all sorts of stuff. It's a little bit much in it in the yard. Although we have got over here, we own this shed and this bit of land here. And if I'm going to buy this plot of land next to it, we could actually... Oh, yeah, we can stick it in here, can we? Let's overlap with... 25021. That's about the cheapest we've had it. If I swing around that way, our seed will come out towards... We drop it off. I'm going to put it there. Why not? That's a big chunk of our money, but we can produce our own seed now. We've got a little garden here as well. I forgot we had that. If we go to our... Um... That's the contracts that are ongoing. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, so we own that plot with a little bit behind it. Only a tiny little bit. That's what I'm aiming for at some point. We'll get that as well. Maybe that as well. That's not too expensive. 17 grand. So we could buy that plot next door to us. How much is that one? Two, four, three. It's a bit more expensive because that's got a cow barn on it. We could buy up the neighbours because we are using part of theirs. For, that's 13 grand. So we can start buying up land around us fairly soon, in all honesty. I'm just wondering where we ought to buy that anyway. 17 grand. It's a big... Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave the trailer in here for the time being. Let's grab our front loader. So I didn't show you that with the... Like I say, the Howl one, it does work. Might need to put the weight on it anyway, but... I mean, it connects. It's nice and short. And actually, it's wider than the three-point link. So it goes around the outside of the three-point link. So that kind of works. The uh, question is, do I put... Should I put the rear weight on? Probably should do. Just to make sure. I think that mixer only takes... It's quite a heavy weight, actually. Did I go for 2,000? It's, it's, it's up there. Oh, I've got ploughing to do as well, haven't I? I'll do it in the next episode. I just want to get some seed underway. Turn the lights off. Whoa. Still a lot of weight. That rear weight is really helping. I'm, again, like I said repeatedly now, I'm loving the physics of this 
This Mercedes is very, very cool. Watch where we're going. Through traffic. I'm going to pull out in front of something anyway, aren't I? Of course I am. Now, this obviously is only going to be seasonal. Unless we plant some wheat and barley, and I've got two fields. Say seasonal, it's when we get harvest contracts come up. Let's have the into there. There it goes. I don't know where the trigger is for this. It's on the other side. There we go. Yeah, don't need to do anything else. It just it does it all for us. We'll get a bucket of barley as well. We'll get that running. And now we're producing our own seed. So we're on our first step. As I said right early on at the start of the episode. It starts with the seed. The seed of an idea. And off we go. Right, let's go and get some uh, barley. Get that running as well. And then I'll get back to that red beet. We've got a fair bit done, actually. Those two contracts will pass out quite nicely. So I think I'll start plucking up a couple of bits of land here and there. I'm still going to carry on contracts. Bits and bobs here and there I can pick up. I might sell. Actually, now we've got the two tractors and we're here, we could, we could sell this because we're probably not going to use it. Well, I don't know, though. If we end up doing productions and stuff, we have got the back of that with straps... Yeah, transporting of pallets and things might not be a bad idea. We'll keep hold of it. I'd rather keep hold of it. Ooh. It's probably as well, because it's a front loader, and it's a 2,000 litre bucket, it's, it's a fair amount. Most of the standard ones are a thousand one five, so two thousand's a fair a fair bit really. I'm gonna swing a little bit wider this time. So we can come a bit straighter on, hopefully. There we go. It's going quite fast. Let's get the barley on the go as well. And there we go. We are producing seed, people. We are producing seed. Our farm supply company is off the ground. Kind of. I suppose we need a logo now. If we're going to have a building and stuff. Like I say, this is not a bad bit of ground. Greenhouse, maybe. Get some sales stuff up. A little sell point, maybe. We could start off with a little shed. It hasn't got to be anything massive. And then we can look at expanding as we go. As well as building our farm, which we're doing already. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to see a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.